go into something real, real deep. Because last night we get, we started to get into hypothetical thinking, and this whole world is is hypothetical thinking. In fact, what I would say is that that this whole cosmos is over and gone, and that the step towards that would be to say that it's all simultaneous. It's simultaneously over. It happened in one instant, and it was corrected simultaneously by the by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit within. And so, effectively, that this entire world is past, simultaneously past. It's like it, it's not like a big long timeline. It's really spread out over millennium. That's the illusion or the, the hallucination. Along with hypothetical thinking, which is we were, uh, we were Iris was talking about. You know, what if somebody comes in and attacks you or wants to stab <laughs> Evelyn, and and what if, how can we be practical in this and that? And so we started just to touch the subject, subject yesterday of hypothetical thinking. But I would say another word for that, because that can, everything's potential, potential, but it's nothing's actual in that. Another way to look at that, I would call it situational thinking. Mm -hmm. That we were just talking about how you behave in certain situations or how you react. That situational thinking is the problem. That the ego is, is entirely situational. And so what happens is, it takes what is already over and done, what's already just one thing, which is the past. And it, Brings it, strings it out on a timeline, and then it breaks it into little time segments, which we could call situations. You know, some people may say that this is a, a little gathering situation, even though gatherings are really continuous, just like the mind is continuous. You know, it, your mind goes with you wherever you go, but the mind, the ego mind, tries to break it up into situations. And I used to ponder. I would say when people would say, "This is the beginning," or "This is the end," the beginning or the end of a relationship, and I would say, "Well, how do you?" How can you mark, really, the beginning of the end of a relationship? Or a song, or a, a day, or whatever. These are the artificial increments of seconds, and minutes, and hours, and days, and weeks, and months. So, situational thinking is the problem. And in fact, in The Course in Miracles, you know, he says that no, in no situation in which you find yourself do you perceive your own best interest. That's a, that's a radical statement. Mm -hmm. In no situation? No, meaning zero? You mean to tell me I've never once, ever, been in a situation that I knew my own best interest and this is what the Christ says? Right, that's what I'm saying here. In no situation, because situational thinking is the problem. And as long as you see yourself fragmented into separate meaningless little persons, human bodies, that are in separate meaningless little disconnected situations, he says that is madness, that is chaos, that is distortion. And what you take to be human life, just basic situational thinking, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, no, uh, that's not possible. So the next thing is, okay, how do I get out of this? And what I would say is, the practical advice in the Course is the rules for decision section, where he says, here, your mind is untrained, so I'm going to give you some real basic steps. This isn't going to be real theoretical, this is going to be highly practical. Uh, Decide the kind of day you want. That's the torch. Because you're, right. you're asking me, how do, you, how do I get this environment and this torch reconciled? Decide the kind of day you want. Not specifically. You know, not how I want to meet with these people, I want this to happen, I want to get that raise, and I want to make sure I, I make the train on time, and on and on. But experientially, right. I want a joyful day, I want a happy day, I want a peaceful day, I want a loving day. I want to be totally free all day. Uh, decide the kind of day you want, and then say to yourself, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. In other words, by myself meaning, if I make no decisions apart from my higher self, from the Spirit, from the, higher, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, then that's exactly the day that I'll get, and it's guaranteed. Uh, if I'm staying my intuition 100%, it doesn't matter what it looks like, I will be happy because that's the torch. So what I'm saying is the torch is completely uninfluenced by, by the environment. In fact, Jesus goes on to say in that section that this also means that you cannot judge what anything means in any situation. And that takes a lot of willingness because if your self-concept is tied into being at, at Best Buy and, and having this particular position, and your job is tied into making judgments. Or like fashion design, if you have to make judgments in terms of evaluating how models look, how clothing looks, and this and that. 
in most every profession you could imagine, other than maybe uh, the savior of the world, <laughs> uh, which you are, which you are the savior of the world. But if you have any other profession other than that, and you see how it fits with family relationships, like, okay, here with my sponsor, I'm, I'm really feeling more of my saviorship coming through here, really feeling free and authentic, I can just let it rip uh, without worrying about consequences but with my father, or with my sister, or so on and so forth, that that's again going to be filtered through that lens of personality. I'm Ivan, I'm a son, or a brother, you know, so on and so forth. And that little personality again is weak and frail. You don't want to rock the boat too much. Uh, or there can seem to be <laughs> a lot of heat that gets put on, intensity that gets put on to that uh, personality. So, the rest of the rules for decision are really just like, if you get off the beam, if you, he says right away, it's easier to just go through your day with the one-two punch. Uh, the kind of day you want firmly in your mind and, and really willing to make no decisions by yourself. And what I would say is what will happen if you follow this simple one-two, is that the self-concept that you believe you are will dissolve away very quickly. Because, of course, you are much more than I've been the worker, or I've been the 12-step the uh, participant, or I've been the brother, or the, so forth, the son. Those are constructs and personality things that have been built, that the mind is, believes that it really is. But if you start getting into this higher purpose, those things will start washing and dissolving away. And you will be given other concepts by the Holy Spirit. Nothing will get yanked away. But, let's say you, you're a course student and you, you think of yourself as like a teacher of God, or a minister of God, or a messenger of peace, or however it fits in your mind, that's going to be more expansive. You're going to feel much more fluid and much more happy. It could even be belly dancing, uh, you know, in the sense of from where you've come from, you feel more free uh, belly dancing. And of course the doubt thoughts will come like, you can't make a living. The belly dancing, you better not give up your day job and da da da. But you're like, I want to get going with this, this is where my passion <laughs> and my joy is. You know, that's the way the Spirit guides you. And more and more miracles happen, like grandmother paying off all the debts, uh, somebody signing over an apartment for you. Uh, oh my gosh, I've got a healing center going here. Yeah, I like this. Uh, and then you get into your joy. Then people start seeing your joy and they say, I want to support that joy. Uh, I want to contribute this, I want to help out here, can I help you in any way? Uh, you're joyful, I want to be like that, I want to hang around that energy. Um, then the ball is rolling, and the Holy Spirit is like expanding those self-concepts to more of what your, your true function is. And your true function ultimately is just a state of mind. It's, people like to always tie it down to, how's this going to look, and uh, you know, do I have to stand on street corners and give out Course in Miracles pamphlets or, you know, where is this, is this going? But what the Course calls your special function is just how it seems to look. But there's really no judgment placed on that. You could be in your joy of belly dancing, or in a pulpit, or sitting under a tree <laughs> somewhere, you know. There's nothing saying ritualistically is a formula that's going to have to look a certain way. You'll just know by your joy that you're totally in your sense of beingness. And that's really what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Are you teaching statistics? Yes, you can teach statistics. Mm -hmm. <laughs>